On March 11, 2020, the world changed. The road ahead looked bleak as the world came to a staggering halt. But most of us weren't as alone as we thought. While many businesses struggled to stay afloat during quarantine, animal welfare organizations were flooded with the highest demand of pets that most had ever seen. Last year, the ASPCA national adoption rate in mid-March skyrocketed from 58% to 85% by the end of the month. Soon, these adoptions were endearingly coined as pandemic puppies. You know, there's never a perfect time to adopt an animal. So um, during the pandemic, a lot of people were like, this is the best time because we're home a lot and we have a lot more time for the animals. So um, we actually had um, a 300% increase in adoptions last year. We were really kind of nervous at first. We actually had to stop all adoptions in the beginning. So at first we were a little bit nervous, but Right now, we have record low numbers of cats available. It was a little bit of a challenge. So the way that we deal with the pandemic, it's like everybody was doing it, it's online adoptions. Since we're close to the shelter, the people are not able to see them or touch them or just see interaction with the dog. So we have an incredible staff that is able to help the people that is calling or to look for a dog so they're able to find their perfect pet. Pets have been scientifically proven to reduce stress, anxiety, and depression. And many families welcomed new furry friends into their homes to combat the increased rates of mental health struggles that have been reported as a result of long-term isolation. We would definitely not have adopted a dog if there had not been a pandemic and we were not all at home all the time. I think this was particularly helpful for our daughters. Um, who are both struggling with uh, isolation. There are so few positives <laughs> in the past year that when there is one, it's nice to be able to focus on that. It was like, because sometimes you have to think about those things, but having a dog you could think about, oh, well, I'm just going to go play with her for like 30 minutes in the backyard, and that helps you get your mind off of some of the stuff that's going on. 2020, and even the beginning of 2021, has been an absolute crazy time and they've been there to watch it all and to sit there with you as you're dealing with a lot of these emotions you know having these cats at home has been one of my best things again i love coming home to my cats i was brought to fostering by the pandemic otherwise maybe i maybe i wouldn't have ever gone there maybe i wouldn't have ever been pushed that far without the time that i've had however there are two sides to the sudden increase in pet adoption on one hand, shelters and rescues are ecstatic to have emptied their kennels and give their pets forever homes. But many professionals are concerned that many of the people who adopted pets last March bit off a little more than they could chew. There's something that like every dog trainer in America is secretly worried about right now, and that is what is gonna happen to this COVID population of puppies and dogs that came into our lives at a time when everybody was home every single day. What happens when this comes off and we go back to work? What happens then for the people who didn't used to have time? Now they suddenly do, and when they don't have time again. We've seen a little bit of lack of socialization aspects that have been going on. And socialization is not just your dog getting along with other dogs. Socialization is like not being freaked out about the sign of an airplane going overhead, or meeting new people, or riding in a car. A lot of these dogs have not gotten used to accepting confinement. And I think it's a pretty normal thing for an animal to be able to accept confinement. They need to, may need to go to a boarding facility. They may need to spend the overnight at a veterinarian clinic. And we don't want them to be stressed because they're confined. I really try hard to level set the expectations to know this is what life is like with a puppy and find out from the adopter what they're planning to do as far as training goes. Despite this, experts reassure anxious pet owners that there's not much that a little research and patience can't fix. So it's never too late to start training your dog. I've had nine and 10 year old dogs in my tricks classes. I think you can get a lot of information from a book. And then of course, always uh, you know, accessing um, help through a certified professional dog trainer is a great way to go. If you've already adopted from a rescue, that's your first phone call. 
any good rescue will have somebody there knowledgeable to say, hey, have you tried X, Y, and Z? In the worst case scenario, rescues and shelters are prepared to care for surrendered animals through rehoming or foster homes. From January to March 2020, Dallas Animal Services reported a 124% increase in fostering from the past five years. I mean, I think we're always gonna have the issue of dogs being rehomed. Sometimes, and I've seen it, the most well-meaning family, it's not a great fit for the dog. With most rescue groups, it's really a lifetime contract. And for whatever reason, if you ever need to rehome that dog, it has to, by contract, go back to that rescue group. It's normal for you to get really attached because it's a pet, that's what, that's what we do. We're humans, we are very emotional, we want to connect, and even with animals. But it's one of those things where, you know, you get to learn this animal so well and you know if that's a right fit for you or not. Although the pandemic has created a slew of negative impacts on so many lives since its inception, COVID-19 has spurred on advancements in the pet worlds that would have otherwise been impossible. This pandemic has changed a lot that, you know, like everything is done through online and sometimes it's a little bit easier, you know. I don't believe that we're going to get rid of our online adoptions. Uh, as a matter of fact, I do want to say that we're trying to progress it even more to promote the dogs out there and you know just to get them a new home. With COVID, we obviously did not do home visits, um, and so we actually turned to doing virtual home visits. We've talked about maybe not doing home visits on the regular and just continuing on with the virtual visits because they were they worked really well and we've had a chance to talk to a lot more people than we would have been able to go into each person's home, especially if they don't live in this area. During a time plagued with uncertainty and loss, pandemic pets have offered their owners emotional support when it was more crucial than ever before. The last year has been so insane for so many reasons. And it has really been nice to know that there is, you know, good in all of this. While COVID-19 created periods of isolation and vulnerability, owners and pets were able to find a silver lining within each other proving that we need our pets just as much as they need us.